Hi friends, welcome to Offer Studies YouTube channel. This is part 40 in Python playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about inheritance in Python. So, what is inheritance? Inheritance will allow you to define a class that inherits all the methods and properties from another class. So, let's assume you have two classes, and from one class, all the properties and methods, if you want to inherit, then you need to go with the inheritance. So, if it is not clear, let's try to look this example. Here we have two classes. One class is person, another class is student. So, here this person class has two properties and one method. So, first name, last name are properties, print full name is method. So, if you want all these properties and methods which should be accessible from the student class object as well, then you need to have an inheritance between these two classes. So, how to create an inheritance between two classes? On the child class, that means the class which is going to inherit the another class and going to take the properties and methods of that class. So, this is called child class here. So, to the child class, you will pass your parent class as a, as a parameter to the constructor of the child class. And once you do that, all the values, all the properties and all the methods inside this parent class will automatically available in the object of the student class as well. If all this is not making sense, let me explain you practically with the example here. So, here let us try to create a class and let us try to give a name like person. Okay. So, I am creating one class called person. So, this person class has a property called first name. Okay. And, uh, uh, and okay, let us keep empty here. And then this person class has another property called last name, maybe. Okay. So, let us keep empty here as well. And if you have seen my previous videos where, where I explained class and init function. So, do you know the how to use this init function, right? So, init function is the function which will be get invoked by your uh, class automatically when you are first time creating an object, right? When you are creating an object. So, I am going to use this init function here in this class also to declare values for these properties. So, for any function inside the class, as I said in my previous videos, uh, your own object, that class own object will get passed as a first parameter. So, since this first parameter will receive the class own object, so I am using a keyword a variable name as a self here. You can use any other name as well. So, using self will give a proper uh, meaningful uh, idea by seeing that name itself. And then let us assume first name, then last name. So, totally three parameters for this function. And inside the function, what I will do on the object of my parent class first name property, I am supplying this first name value. And then on the object of let us say like self, self is the object of the parent class and which has a property like last name right because we have created a property here last name and to that we are setting a value whatever getting passed into this init function. So, this value ok. So, if all this is not making sense how to create this class, how to declare this variable, what is this method, init method and if it is not making sense to you at this point of time, I will strongly encourage you to pass, watch my previous videos. Then only you will understand what is class, what is init function, what is property, what is method. Then only you watch this video or else you will not get it. So, let us create another function here called like uh, maybe print full name ok. And using to the print full name function also I am going to supply the class own, pro own object as a property here uh, as a parameter here. And inside this maybe I am simply going to print uh, first name and then one space and then after that maybe last name. Okay, so this is what I am going to print. So let me save all these changes, and now class is ready. So once a any class is ready, uh, which with some certain properties and certain methods here, then you can create an object for that particular class, and that object will access this all properties and methods, right? You know that from the past video. So uh, let me do the same thing here. So I am going to create a person object here, person object using a constructor. So constructor means name of the class with open bracket and close bracket. Since this uh, person class has a init function which will take uh, to one parameter is your object itself. Uh, you no need to pass that explicitly. Why? Because automatically will get passed and another parameter is first name, another parameter is last name. So, to the first name I am passing value like Sheikh. To the last name I am passing value like Mahir. So, let me save these changes. So, now on the person object, if you see, you can see this full name method as well. So, let us call this full name method here. So, what should happen? This constructor should have set this shake as a first name and Mahir as a last name and then the moment I call this print full name method on the object, it should print my full name. So, let me save these changes and then let me run this code. See, it is printing. So, this is what you know from our previous videos already, right? 
Now let's assume these properties and these methods I want to be available in another class as well. And uh, let's assume my another class name is like a student. So, so student is also one person, right? So all the uh, and also employee is also one person. So that's the reason what I did. I am trying to divide the classes. All the basic properties, whatever a person should have, that I am keeping inside this person object. And then depending upon the role of that person, whether he is a student, whether he is an employee, whether he is a labor, depending upon that, I am creating a new class. So you can think like that. So but to the student class, I no need to use. Let's assume if I create a student class like this, and then again if I keep like first name property inside the student class. And then last name property inside the student class doesn't make sense, right? Why? Because we already have a class which is like a which is like a meaningful class uh, which which can be act as a parent class for my student class. So all the common common properties what student and person should have, all the common properties are already available here. Why to create again those properties inside this class? So what I can do here, I can inherit this parent class. This this parent class means person class into my student class. So what I can do to inherit here, use open bracket, close bracket, and pass the class name as a parameter here. So once you do that, what will happen? Any object which is created in, on top of this student class will will get access to all these properties: first name, last name, print name function, and everything. Let me practically show you that. So in the student class, right now I am not do I don't want to implement anything. I don't want to keep any properties. I don't want to keep any methods. So to avoid any implementation, you can use this pass keyword here to avoid implementation of the class. And then here. What I am going to do, I am going to create an object for the student class using the student class name constructor. So I am using a student class name. Okay, and see the moment I try to call this constructor, it is asking me to supply first name and last name. Why? Because student class is inheriting this person, and student class don't have any implementation, but person class has an implementation for init. So that is the reason here it is explain it is expecting you to pass the values for the first name and last name so that. This first name property and last name property will get those values. So what I will do here in the first name this time, let's assume I will pass like uh, shape and then maybe Wafa. Okay, so let me save these changes. Now let's try to call this use this student object. When I say dot, see first name property, last name property, print full name property. How come all these properties or methods are coming on top of this student object? Why? Because if you see student object doesn't have any property and and method still i am able to see them right intelligence is showing that the reason is we did a inheritance here parent class contain all those properties and methods that's the reason student class also can access them so here i will do this print full name function let me save these changes now let me clear this here and let me re execute this file see it is printing shape profile so that means without having any property and method by using the inheritance i am able to take these properties and methods into my student object as well so this is what called inheritance okay so usually in real time scenarios what they will do if they want to create lot of classes uh, if they will usually think through is, is there any common properties across all these classes if yes then create a parent class and keep all the common properties and common methods there and then on top of that create this child classes and do the inheritance so that's what you usually do so here as as i am doing so person is a common class which will contain first name last name print full name then i may be having a student class and then i may be having another class maybe like employee right so even if employee will have the first name and last name so that's the reason i will do the inheritance here as well so like this so in such scenarios we should use the uh, inheritance basically and if you closely observe this init function is actually declared inside the parent class so what if if i declare a init function inside the child class what will happen in that case the init function what you create inside the child class this is going to override this init function what already available in the parent class let me practically show you that so here what i am going to do i am going to declare a new init function define init function okay and then let me remove this about this super keyword i am going to explain in a couple of minutes so let me remove all this and here if you see to the init function i am passing self that means object of the student class then first name then last name and then maybe i can pass like uh, year also and then inside that what i will do right let's assume self dot you have first name property already because of the inheritance to the first name property i am setting the value first name and then again self dot you have last name property from the inheritance so i will take that and the ln value i am going to set it there and then on the self that means on the same object of the student i am going to create another new property called uh, graduation year maybe right are passed out here let's assume passed out here okay 
and here i am going to take the value from the year so if you closely observe now this passed out year property will be available only in the student object this property will not be available in the parent object because this is like a uh, this is like a parent class right child class will contain access to the, all the properties of the parent class but parent class will not get the access of the child class properties so now this particular uh, line where i am as creating a new property called passed out here this is like specific to child class all other properties are coming from the parent class so now and i want to create another one function also which is specific to child class will i can do that so i can do that here so if i do here like define maybe uh, print passed out here so this is my function name let's assume so to the function name the object itself i am passing it here and here inside that maybe i am printing like uh passed out year is then whatever the year i am passing so let's let's convert the year to string and whatever the year uh, on the object right on the student object whatever the year i supply like passed out year so let me save these changes now if you closely observe i created a new method that method is taking the student object itself and printing passed out year of that object is this much that means of that student is this one something like that okay so now now let's try to create a object of the student here so let me remove all this and then let's create like a student obg student object using a constructor of student class and to the constructor first name see it is expecting three this is not expecting two why because student class has a new implementation of init function so this function will be called every time whenever you create object of the student not the above function why because this child class function will override the parent class function so here what i am doing to the first name maybe i will pass uh, sheik and then to the last name maybe i will pass mahir and then for the passed out year maybe i will pass 2012 and then on the student object i will use this passed out year function okay so this function will print the passed out year of the student right so let me save these changes and now if i run this code okay so there is error once okay i got the error what basically my function name is print passed out year right so i am calling a property with open bracket and flower bracket so that is the problem so let's remove this here so here we should use print passed out year right so this is what let me save these changes here now let me clear this and now let me execute it and see it is printing passed out year is 2012 right so all this magic is happening uh, because uh, and also let me show you that if i create a parent class uh, that person class uh, uh, object so let me create like person class object using the constructor of the person class and to that uh, let's pass values like maybe like shaik shaik first name then last name i will pass only like maybe wafa okay now if you see on the person object you don't see this uh, uh, passed out year property and print passed out year method and all right why because that is parent class parent class will not get the properties and methods from the child class okay so now let's go to the presentation here so we have discussed what we got the idea like what is parent class and child class now and uh, for some reason let's assume if you create a init function inside the child class but still you want to access the parent class init function only then you can do it in two ways either you can call that the init function from the parent class using this super keyword or you can use the parent class name directly so let me practically show you that so if i go to presentation here so let's assume uh, for some reason i don't want to this implementation and uh, let's assume in the student class i created this init function okay and uh, this init function should again call the parent init function only if that is my requirement then what i can do here here what is the parent class name person right so person dot init okay so like this i can do i can i can pass all, all my objects here like self then first name then last name so i can do like this so this way what will happen right whenever you try to uh, create a object from your child class this init function will invoke and then this init function is going to call the parent class init function again or instead of using the parent class name you can use a keyword called super as well so this is super keyword actually helps you to point to your parent class so in this case person is my parent class the same thing i have explained here see if here using super keyword yeah you need to make sure this super keyword 
with open bracket and close bracket so sorry for that so using super keyword i am trying to invoke the init function of my parent class and again so you no need to supply this self keyword as well here okay as i said you can remove this so you simply take the parameters whatever coming into this init function of the child class and pass those parameters to the parent class automatically in the parent class the self keyword automatically take the object of that uh, particular class so we no need to worry so basically this way you can make sure your child class in it is or your child class method is pointing to the parent class method only it is not overriding any code so if you want to do that in rare cases you can do in this way you can make use of this super keyword as well or else usually people try to override the uh, any method what is coming from the upper class uh, and then do their own implementation based upon the child class specifications okay so i think that's it in this video if this video is not clear please try to watch multiple times because understanding this inheritance is more important thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i do this thank you so much